Okay, uh, let's start. Uh, the Science and Technology Campus. Uh, the uh, video clip that you saw about Mason uh, indicates we're 50 years old as a university. And as you can see from this slide, uh, we were founded uh, on the SciTech campus uh, in 1997, previously known as the Prince William campus. Uh, so we're about 25 years old. Uh, currently have 134 acres. Uh, of course, we sit in Innovation Park. Uh, we have currently have uh, eight buildings that we're building our night, and we're primarily an upper level undergraduate and graduate campus, uh, along with a tremendous amount of research that, that's going on. Uh, this is the list of the uh, programs we currently have. Uh, College of Education and Human Development has been on campus since we started. One of the reasons uh, Mason got involved uh, with building the campus uh, because the uh, university needed a, uh, a laboratory, if you will, for our recreation program. Uh, and so uh, they founded the, uh, the Freedom Center in concert with our partners. And we'll talk more about that later. Uh, our newest uh, uh, program is uh, the College of Engineering and Computing primarily mechanical engineering, uh, although we've had computer science uh, from the very beginning as well. Uh, our uh, returning uh, program is the College of uh, Public Health. Uh, we used, we've always had a nursing program on campus until about five years ago when they opened Peterson Hall in Fairfax and moved it, consolidated all of the uh, health and human services programs back at Fairfax. Uh, I'm happy to announce uh, that uh, the Dean of the College of Public Health has chosen to establish her personal research uh, operation uh, on the uh, on the Prince William campus and the innovation uh, in the uh, CAPCLIA lab, which is located in the IABR. Uh, and you can see the rest of the programs. And I'll talk a little bit more on how the academic programs are expanding uh, when we get to the slide on the life sciences and engineering building. Uh, the video clip that you saw uh, was courtesy of the new uh, uh, operation uh, in branding. Uh, the vice president for branding is uh, Paul Alvin, and he is a tremendous asset. He's a tremendous addition to the university. He's probably been with us now. A, about three, three and a half years. Uh, he has brought uh, uh, branding at the at the university to to a new level, and we're happy to announce that he's uh, working with uh, one of his contractors, uh, Sunshine and Bourbon, uh, to develop a branding campaign for this the SciTech campus. Uh, as uh, we used to like to say, we're a well-kept secret, uh, but we don't want to be a well-kept secret any longer. So we will uh, uh, be putting uh, a lot of advertising out uh, concerning what SciTech campus is and what we do. Uh, we're happy to get that started. Uh, you'll see more about uh, that in the local community uh, starting early summer, I would imagine. Uh, part of that program, of course, is to upgrade campus signage. Um, some of you know, I think Tom probably knows this uh, firsthand, uh, Innovation Park signage uh, was actually modeled after the George Mason signage that you see uh, on this diagram. Uh, we wanted to have similar signage. Uh, the, the county just beat us to it uh, by <laughs> several years, uh, but we'd like to get this new signage up uh, uh, in conjunction with building our next uh, building, which is underway. Uh, finally, we want to bring the campus into the 21st century by adding charging stations. Uh, being the science and technology campus, we're the only ones without charging stations right now. So it's been a, 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 a mission of mine to make sure we get uh, charging stations on campus. Uh, having one hybrid and one electric vehicle, that's just a natural, it's a given. Uh, so it's one of my goals. 
Uh, I'll talk a little more about the Freedom Center in a bit. I just want to make everyone aware of the fact that uh, the Freedom Center offers corporate memberships. Uh, uh, the chamber uh, actually gets a discount uh, because of uh, being a chamber member. Uh, so uh, Olga O'Brien is available uh, to discuss corporate memberships if anyone online is uh, is interested or you can contact me and I'll put you in touch with Olga. Uh, one of the Freedom Center's newest programs is Exercise is Medicine. It is a, a national program. Uh, we are the only one in the Commonwealth right now that offers this program, but it's, but it's designed uh, to prevent, slow or reverse the progression of chronic disease. Uh, we've been able to secure some scholarships, uh, some grant money, uh, so we can offer scholarships to those uh, in need of this service uh, who can't afford uh, to pay for it. Uh, so again, uh, Olga O'Brien is a, the central point of contact. Uh, but contact me if uh, you have any questions, and I'll put you in contact with her. Uh, capstone program. Uh, most of the colleges uh, at Mason offer capstone services. Uh, these are provided by uh, senior uh, level undergraduates. Uh, and if you've got a project uh, that you're interested in uh, having some outside uh, assistance with, uh, you can always sign up for a capstone uh, assistance program. Uh, a lot more information is available on capstone. I think if you contact Molly Grove, uh, she can put you in contact with the right person uh, at the university, depending on uh, what your needs are. Governor's School, this is one of my favorites. Uh, we are the 19th Governor's School in Virginia. Uh, as you can see, uh, it, we're about 12 years old. I think this is our 12th class uh, in progress. Uh, we added a STEM to our curriculum a couple of years ago in engineering, uh, but as you can see, we're a, uh, a STEM program. Uh, and right now we have 163 students. Uh, potential is about 181 uh, or 182. Uh, that's the, uh, the cap. But if you look at the picture and you look at what the students are wearing, you'll see that graduates of this program get into some of the finest schools in the nation. Uh, and many of them are on full scholarship when they attend the school. Uh, we're happy to say that uh, Mason gets their care of students from the, uh, the graduate school, uh, or from the governor's school. So we're, uh, we're happy to host them on campus. Uh, this is the only governor's school that uh, is ho hosted uh, by a four-year uh, degree uh, university. Life Sciences and Engineering Building. That's currently under construction on campus. Uh, we're, we're really anxious to get this building uh, up and rolling. Uh, basically, it's going to expand our academic offerings on campus. Uh, it will also expand the number of students we have on campus to 5,000 plus, uh, and you can see the uh, the programs that uh, are going to be uh, offered in this particular building. One thing I'd like to highlight with this building is uh, LSEB is the first building that's we we know of at Mason that uh, had the end users uh, participate in the design of that building. So. Unlike some of the other buildings that Mason has constructed, we don't have to go back in in a couple of years and uh, renovate uh, to add different uh, aspects to the building. Uh, so with end users involved, uh, we know we've got a finished product that will service our needs. And you can see the colleges that are sharing space. And this is also one of the few buildings at Mason uh, which uh, in which no one actually owns space. Uh, it's all a shared space, uh, and uh, it'll be controlled uh, by the registrar and programmed by the registrar. Uh, but uh, the SciTech Executive Office, uh, my team, uh, will oversee the, the governance of the building itself. So 
Frank to see if that online. It looks like the fall of 2025 instead of 2024, unless we can speed up construction. We had a little late start uh, on this building. Uh, but again, we're very anxious to see this building up and running. This is what it's going to look like. Uh, the picture on your left it will uh, be what it looks like when you drive down uh, Mason Circle. Uh, and the building on the right is actually the uh, back of the building, uh, which will have parking behind. And that little area that's located uh, just to the left of that lower picture is going to be a plaza. Uh, it'll kind of be the, the hub of the campus uh, when it's up and running. To support all this, uh, I, I guess the first thing I want to say is that uh, the SciTech campus has collaboration and partnership in its DNA. Uh, and it starts with the fact that uh, Prince William County donated the land to the university, uh, the 120, an original 120 acres to, of the property. So it's just natural uh, that we would be uh, in uh, partnership and collaboration with uh, the county and the city of Manassas, uh, which is extremely close to us. And uh, and so we've, over the years, built two major uh, uh, facilities, uh, the Freedom uh, Center and the Hilton Performing Arts Center, both built under tripartite agreements uh, with uh, shared governance of, uh, of those facilities as well. So the one thing we were lacking, the one thing that this campus really is to expand and explode, if you will, uh, is uh, amenities for our students, staff, and faculty. Uh, we've been big supporters of uh, a town center uh, built adjacent to the campus with a seamless transition uh, back and forth uh, that will give us the amenities that we need uh, to expand operations on campus uh, in the years to come. Uh, we're happy to announce that uh, Castle Rock and Stanley Martin are actually two co-developers of, uh, of what's going to be the town center uh, in concert with uh, the county government, ensuring that uh, we have the amenities that uh, they were looking for. Uh, it'll be mixed-use development. Uh, they will provide student housing uh, and staff and faculty housing. Uh, Retail is very important for us, and the potential exists for additional lab space in the town center. First facility that we'll see uh, will actually be uh, in the summer of 2024. That will be some of the townhomes that Stanley Martin is uh, is putting up. Uh, the first uh, completed building in the Castle Rock portion of the town center. Uh, should be the uh, student housing uh, apartment complex. This is uh, what uh, the Stanley Martin Homes uh, portion of the town center is going to look like. Primarily, uh, we're looking at town homes and this entire area. And they are also going to build some uh, apartments with uh, retail on the first floor. Uh, and this road that you see right here where my pointer is, is what we call Freedom Center Boulevard. It'll actually come off of uh, 234 uh, with the right in, right out, and it will end at the uh, at the Oval on Mason Circle. Uh, it uh, provides us with another entrance into campus, uh, which is also needed. Uh, this north-south orientation is a little Strange, but this is kind of what we call a north-south road. Uh, that's going to be Catherine Johnson Boulevard, uh, and it's going to be a, a, a major uh, addition to the town center itself and runs through both portions, of course. This is uh, Castle Rock's first building. Uh, this would be a combination of apartments and student residence. Uh, student residence will be available for undergraduate and graduate students. Uh, and so that would give us the ability to house more people on campus. Right now, we only have 152 beds of graduate housing uh, that's located in Beacon Hall. 
uh, this building is anticipated to be a, uh, online in uh, the fall, summer or fall of 2025. One of the newest additions that we have on campus is a uh, outdoor forensic science research lab. Uh, we affectionately call it the body farm. Uh, it's one of eight in the United States. Uh, and it's going to help us push our forensic science program into uh, a, a real uh, first class operation. Uh, the picture that you see, the woman on the right is Mary Ellen O'Toole. She is the director of the forensic program. Uh, you may have seen her many times on television, most recently talking about mass shootings. Uh, she is extraordinarily qualified to, uh, to run this forensic science program and is a, kind of a, a star in our own right. But this gives us the capability of uh, pushing the, the forensics program uh, to, the, to the next level. Uh, our goal is to bring the entire forensics program uh, onto campus, uh, obviously expanding our uh, forensic science program with the addition of the life sciences and engineering building but there's one other asset that we need, uh, and that's called a crime scene house. Uh, we currently have a crime scene house in Fairfax. Uh, it is a facility that enables our forensic science students to actually conduct uh, investigations on uh, mock uh, crime scenes. And uh, it, it's a necessary uh, part of the education program uh, so that these folks, uh, these young students, uh, learn how to properly uh, treat evidence in a, in a crime scene operation. Uh, we're currently working to try to establish a crime scene house on uh, on the campus, and we're working with the uh, the director of uh, criminal justice services, uh, Jackson Miller. Many of you may know Jackson, uh, former delegate. Uh, we're also working with the uh, the director of uh, forensic science at the Commonwealth level, uh, Linda Jackson, uh, who uh, they're both interested uh, in this project, uh, and we're we're working to start at getting the resources we need to to uh, to build this facility. Uh, in addition to being the crime scene house, we also want to have a criminal justice training facility co-located with this operation, uh, which will help uh, train many of the local uh, law enforcement agents uh, in the Northern Virginia region. Uh, so we're working with them as well. Domic Science Center, uh, we're responsible for, uh, actually oversee the operation at the Potomac Science Center. Uh, and uh, I'll let you read the chart, but one of the, the most exciting things that, that uh, I can say to the chamber members about the, the uh, Potomac Science Center is the fact that it is a fantastic special events venue. Uh, the chamber has had a, a couple of uh, uh, operations down there already, uh, but for any of the chamber members who would like to have a special event uh, of their own, uh, we are available to provide uh, the event space and, and all the amenities that go along with that. Uh, obviously, it's a uh, it's a research facility, uh, environmental research uh, on the Chesapeake Bay watershed, uh, but uh, we also offer uh, our partners uh, the opportunity to enjoy the venue. Uh, it's a beautiful location. Enjoy the venue for any special events that they have. This uh, is short, uh, shows us two uh, colleges who still faith in the facility, uh, but as you can see, it's, uh, it's water oriented. Uh, and I'm really happy to, to show the uh, diagram or the picture that's uh, on this particular uh, chart. Uh, it is a mural that's painted on the side of our parking garage. And if you look real closely, on standing on top of the parking garage is the, 
is the guy who actually did the mural himself, uh, Taker One. Uh, and it kind of puts it in perspective of just how large this uh, this mural is. Uh, this mural was actually done with spray paint, 5,000 cans of spray paint. Uh, uh, quite a, an operation. It's a, uh, it's a tourist uh, attraction, if you will, right there on the side of the parking garage in, in Belmont Bay. So we're happy that that is complete. And kudos to Molly Grove, who was responsible for much of the operation to get this thing done. 